The first 48 hours after the crime has been committed are vital, she says, because realities start to settle quickly and victims become less inclined to get the help they need or to discuss the specifics with law enforcement or community resources. They're also a lot less willing with the passing of time to disclose facts that would give us a better understanding of how dangerous the offender is, she said, and also. And also. And so what I did was I created a team that looked at domestic violence cases as they came in from the jail and responded to those victims immediately to try to get them hooked up with the resources, to try to get them more information, to assess the lethality risk that the offender posed to them. It's been really, really effective, and that is a program that I'm most proud of addressing the needs of victims. It's her priority. She said the creation of the Domestic Violence Acute Response Team has given her a series of tools and procedures to help victims work through the process. Seven cops that I like, seven good cops, Willis Russell, Serpico, Bass Reeves, Frank Phillips, Andy Griffith. I also like that Howerton and Ricky Rodriguez for now. Willis Russell, after the Civil War was over, Owen County, Kentucky was riddled with KKK. KKK were the magistrates, the judge executive, the mayors, cops, and city councilmen. KKK were ever, everywhere, though, the local government, and they were peppered in the townspeople so the white supremacist culture had embedded itself not just in the townspeople but it was actually in the local leadership and willis russell he's a u.s marshal he posed as a small business owner just selling wares peacefully over to the side the kkk tried to recruit him and then he was able to take down the entire whole shebang from the top to the bottom so the KKK had taken over the local government, and they were kind of all over the place. But Willis Russell, a U.S. Marshal, was able to go into Owen County, Kentucky and clean house. Serpico. Serpico, there's a movie about him. Serpico stood up to the entire Department of Crooked Cops, and they were all on the take. But he wasn't going to take the bribe. He was a good man. That's why he became a cop, to stop criminal racketeering bullshit. Bass Reeves modernized and civilized the Wild West. Bass Reeves was a black man. He was a police officer during the Wild West, right after the Civil War ended in the Wild West. Incredible. He made a couple mistakes, but he made like a thousand, two thousand arrests. Bass Reeves modernized and civilized the Wild West. Frank Phillips, he comes out of Kentucky. Frank Phillips, he killed a pedophile and he arrested the Hatfields. Fuck a murderer, fuck a rapist, fuck a pedophile. And fuck the Hatfields. Frank Phillips had the courage to stand up against the criminals. When nobody else would. The Hatfields were running roughshod over everybody. Until Frank Phillips showed up. Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith is a TV show. It's Mayberry. But that's the ideal. Mayberry. That's the ideal. Could you imagine a sheriff going around resolving people's disputes? Because he knows everybody in the community. So he could just use his good name and his good reputation and because he gives a damn about person A and person B he wants the dispute to be resolved so Andy Griffith would just go around and resolving disputes and conflicts between people without a gun just by conversing and talking to him and saying okay what can we do in order to make this right again the law is there to prevent one person from injuring another person if there's no victim there's no crime what are you the law is there to prevent one person from injuring another person. If I smoke a joint in Chicago, how did that bother you? I smoked a joint in Chicago. And I got arrested for it. And I had to go to jail. How did that bother you, though? Too many times cops and lawyers and judges create problems where none had existed from before. I didn't bother anybody. Nobody was... There was no victim. It's like that blind man getting arrested or that black woman being arrested. That white woman just wanted to put her fucking hands on the black woman. Why? I don't know. Black woman was the sweetest person in the world. Amber Heard's going around shitting on beds. But uh, Amber Ruffin, she said when she's confronted with anger, she just breaks down and starts crying. So she's acting like the black woman because she's black. That somehow she's like not sweet or not nice or not kind and lawful and polite and decent when actually Andy Amber Ruffin is the sweetest person in the world and that black woman was one of the sweetest people in the world too that white woman however she couldn't wait to put her fucking hands on other fucking people 
She didn't seem like a sweet person at all. So, Andy Griffith, Frank Phillips, Bass Reeves, Serpico, Willis Russell, Howerton, Ricky Rodriguez. I can't stand domestic violence. I cannot stand domestic violence. I want to pull up this power wheel. So, you have a power wheel. There's a power and control wheel, and then there's a equality wheel. And so, a person who just wants power over somebody, there's a cycle. They're just going to keep putting violence on top of you, and ultimately, it's just you shut up and obey. That's all that fucking matters. I'm not going to treat you like an equal. Shut up and obey. And so, here's all the things in the power wheel. You know you're an abuser if you're using coercion and threats. You know you're an abuser if you're using intimidation or if you're using emotional abuse. If you're using isolation or economic abuse or male privilege. If you're minimizing, denying, and blaming or if you're using the children. Those are all things under power and control. And then they got like a subsection under each one of those. So if we were to click on one of those, could we read like under intimidation? There's a whole list of different things. And then it's a cycle, right? And so this is good for women to recognize it, but it's also good for men to not be like this, right? So we need to educate ourselves. Um, is a power and control wheel? Yeah, making her afraid by looks, actions, and gestures. There's some people that, you know, they'll say, just give them a look like what? Like you're going to hit them or something? Just give them that look. Smashing things, destroying her property, abusing pets, displaying weapons. So those are like intimidation things, right? Those are like, why all of a sudden you just pulled out a sword and you're just swinging it all around all over the place? Abusing the pets, you just keep on threatening to leave her, to commit suicide, to report her to welfare, making her drop charges, making her do illegal things. So this is emotional abuse, putting her down, insulting her, making her feel bad about herself, calling her names, right? If you... A lot of times, an abuser, if they could just get the person that they abuse to accept their abuse, you might think it being the oppressed, you don't have any options, but that's the biggest thing that the oppressor wants you to think, that you don't have any options, that you don't have any other place to go. You just have to shut. You're just too stupid, and you can't do it on yourself. You have to shut up and obey. Just shut up and obey. What, you're going to go out and try to get your own house? I will destroy your house. I'll put a hole right in the middle of it. You think you're going to go get a job or go to college? No, I'll make sure you're homeless. Make sure nobody gives you a place to sleep. You think you're going to... So those are bad things, right? Those are bad things. Now, this was great because this is Women's Crisis Center. They they said, okay, here's an equality wheel. Typically, it's the man, right? The man's beating on the man, the woman and the children. But the woman can be abusive in, in some respects. The children can be abusive too. But the woman could be abusive to the man if the man's a sweetheart and a pushover. And you don't want him to have no spinal cord. You want him to assert himself. And um, you don't want her to abuse the children. The children are kids. So she's a grown-ass adult. She can hurt the kids. I remember my aunt, Kathy, came in, just twisted my arm, didn't give a shit. Didn't even think twice about it. Still don't think twice about it. (laughs) Didn't even care. Yeah, I got the face of a a soon-to-be man. But I'm just a boy, and you're an adult, so you're stronger than me. You're stronger than me. Now, here's what equality looks like, okay? Equality is economic partnership, respect, trust, and support, honest and accountability, responsible parenting. Let's see here. Non-threatening behavior, negotiation, and fairness. Respect, trust, and support, honesty, and accountability. Responsible parenting, shared responsibility. Mutually agreeing on a fair distribution of work, making family decisions together, supporting her goals in life, respecting her right to her own feelings, friends, activities, and opinions, and vice versa. You got to respect my own feelings, friends, activities, and opinions. I remember I told this woman that I was talking to that I liked that I'm just real big about freedom, and what I was trying to say is the Bill of Rights, right? I just, the English Bill of Rights, the Lithuania Bill of Rights, Colorado's Bill of Rights, I like Bills of Rights. The freedom to speak, the freedom to peacefully assemble, right? The right to defend myself. But when I told her that I wanted freedom, she goes, so you want to have sex with other women? (laughs) As if that's the only thing that I would want to use freedom for. (laughs) You don't want to, you don't want to just obey me and all my orders? Because you want to have sex with other women, huh? No. I don't really want to obey anybody. Equality doesn't say I have to obey you. Equality says you got to respect me. 
Listen to me non-judgmentally. Be emotionally affirming and understanding. Value and opinions. Yeah, my God, that uh, the old shithead, the skank, she didn't do any of this stuff. She was such a fucking terrorist. She was such a fucking abusive piece of shit. Trust and support. It was hard for... She wasn't trying. She wasn't even trying. It sucks when you're trying in the relationship and they just... Well, I don't even... I'm not even going to try. Okay, I want a family. And you're... You can't... Talking and acting so that she feels safe and comfortable and expressing herself and doing things. God, that would... That sounds nice. Where I feel safe, uncomfortable, and expressing myself and doing things. Negotiation affairs, seeking mutually satisfying resolutions to conflicts, accepting change, and being willing to compromise. So, I can't stand domestic violence. And ultimately, when it comes to um, not just domestic violence, but also uh, child welfare agencies, I, I want... I don't want the government to come in and just fuck everything up, but what I want is for the government to try their damnedest to make the marriage work. And then if there's kids, you got the family is more important than everything. So that they're fucking fuck their marriage. If there's kids and it's best for them to be divorced, make sure they get divorced. If there's kids, that's all that's the main thing with But man, there's a man, there's a woman, there's kids. We want good, strong families. We want good, strong marriages. And we want good, strong marriages and families to last as long as we could possibly get them to last. It's good for society, good for stability, good for a lot of things, security and a lot of things. And so if a man and woman is being serious and they want to you know, stick with the marriage, well, they'll go counseling and they'll do the things that they need to do. And so what I want for the government, you, you go in there and you think it's the man and the cops are a bunch of men, so they'll just attack the man and hit him a couple times. And maybe he's wrong. Maybe he's in the right. Who knows? Maybe it needs to go to family court and we just need to really sort a lot of different things out. But if they want to still be a family and if they still want to maintain their marriage, I think the government should support that as far as they can. As far as, you know, as healthy as it's possible to do. So they should divorce, right? If there's children, it's one thing to ruin your own damn lives, but you brought kids into the world, so you're going to mess their lives up too. If a man and a woman want to just ruin themselves forever and ever, well, that's on them. So I just want to make a couple of those comments, right? Evil comes from hedonism, nihilism, and sadism. Evil doesn't come from gender. It's not based in one or the other. Typically, I'll go ahead and grant that men are the abusers. Typically. But women can be abusers. They're adults. And they can be abusers with other women. They can be abusers with men, you know, to a lesser extent. But they could definitely be abusers to children. And so men should protect the women. And both men and women should be protecting the kids. Nobody should be hitting anybody. Nobody should be abusing anybody. Nobody should be assaulting anybody. Evil comes from hedonism, nihilism, and sadism. Bill Burr had said that if a woman just started hitting him, he would run to the bathroom and lock himself in the bathroom and then just call the police. There's no crystal clear rules about how, you know, these things are supposed to work out. But I would say typically people are in a relationship because they like each other and they want that to keep on going. So I just want to mention that when it comes to child welfare, when it comes to domestic, you know, violence incidents it's not a nintendo game so i mean an abuser is what that's 12 times i mean how do you quantify abuse it's a hell of a label to put on a person but if they've abused a person 12 times and the abused aren't they're not going to get out for themselves then you might have to you know take a couple steps for them but domestic violence is bullshit if you love your wife and children you're not going around insulting her and abusing the pets and kids and scaring her and walking around with a sword and gun and all this other stuff. You're doing this non-threatening behavior, negotiation, fairness, respect, trust, and support. Now, I know some women who, when you respect them because they've always been terrorized by awful people, they'll take that sign of respect as weakness. That's why I think it's important that we all understand that women can be domestic violence abusers as well. 
And if I'm, you know, the man, sir, sure, if she hits me, I can, you know, I could physically defend myself at the time. But if she attacks me and then say she falls over and then cuts herself and calls the police and says, hey, this is what happens. I think they're going to, you know, probably believe her. So I think that what I'm trying to say here is understand the man's situation a little bit. If I'm in the household and I'm being attacked, what the hell am I supposed to do? She can't attack me. And then by attacking me, she's going to lose respect for me. And, um, and I want this marriage to succeed. I mean, if she was attacking me and I grabbed her by the wrist and I, and I kept her from hitting me, you know, th there might be marks around her wrist. No, I wasn't trying to do nothing. I was just getting the car keys to leave. And people lie too, so that's another thing. Make sure you find a good spouse. <laughs> you do need to trust each other. But, I mean, what am I trying to say? You got to trust a trustworthy person. And uh, yeah, as a as a my manhood says, I gotta protect those who are weaker than me. So I gotta protect gay men and transgendered the women and children and the pets, the cats and the dogs. That's what my manhood tells me. Now, if you grew up in an abusive household, you might think that terrorism and violence is what a good man or a strong man looks like. I don't agree with that. So. That's it. That's my two cents. Just think about the man's perspective. A good man's perspective. How about that? Think about a good man's perspective. Also think about a good man and a good woman who want a good relationship. And maybe something had happened. And uh, let's assume that the, both of them are at fault. But they still want to make it work out. I think that we should try to support marriages for as long as we possibly, you know, if it looks like they can keep on going. If one person's just psycho and they just keep being psycho 12 times, no, we can't. Um, we got to do something different here. So we got to support marriages. We got to support families. Most of all, right? The whole idea of the marriage is it's, so, it's a great institution because you're raising kids. And if you're destroying and hurting the kids, well, then that, that institution needs to be destroyed. The family, the institution of family needs to prevail over the institution of marriage for the sake of our species. So there you go. Evil comes from hedonism, nihilism, and sadism, and it's not just limited to gender.